Ireland is one of a small number of European countries not to have a nuclear power station. Why is this? And was there ever a time Ireland considered it? In this video, we will explore the controversial history of nuclear energy in Ireland. Ireland is an island nation in Western Europe. Today, the country is one of the richest in the world, with a GDP per capita of roughly 79,000 US dollars, placing it ahead of countries like the US and the UK. While the country is prosperous today, this was not always the case, and until relatively recently, the country was the poorest in Western Europe, with chronic unemployment and immigration. Having become independent from the United Kingdom in 1921, the country found itself with almost no major industry, with the main economic activity being agriculture. This led the government of the day to adopt protectionist economic policies to develop industrially. Central to economic development is having a stable and secure supply of cheap energy, and since the country has no significant coal deposits, it harnessed the power of its rivers. In 1927, a dam was built on the River Shannon, the largest dam in the world at the time, and the country established the first national grid. Then in the 60s, a policy of free trade and liberal economic reform were pursued, and the country began to rapidly industrialise, leading to a huge increase in demand for power. During World War II, because of a shortage of coal supply from Britain, the government began to utilise the country's bogland, organising mechanised harvesting of peat for fuel. However, Despite this, as well as having dammed nearly all major rivers in the country, there was a shortfall in production that had to be met up by the burning of imported fossil fuels. This left the country in a vulnerable position. The country's energy mix was far too dependent on imports, and by the early 70s, over 80% of the Irish energy mix was coming from imported fuels, leading to a volatile situation. This prompted the Irish government to begin sending engineers to Germany, Britain, and the US to study nuclear further and look into the possibility of setting up a nuclear reactor in Ireland. In 1971, the Nuclear Energy Board was set up as a consultative body made up of professionals in the field of nuclear science and industry to keep the government up to speed with trends in the nuclear industry and also to provide feasibility studies. Then, in 1973, the energy crisis happened. The energy crisis of 73 was when OPEC countries, such as Iraq and Saudi Arabia, upset over the West's perceived backing of Israel in the Yom Kippur War, put into effect an oil embargo, causing worldwide shortages of oil and a dramatic increase in oil price. Ireland, like most countries in Europe and North America, was badly impacted. This spurred on efforts and led to the ESB, the country's electricity provider, to formalise plans for a reactor in Ireland. So, why nuclear in the first place? Nuclear power has a number of advantages. For one, uranium, the material used in nuclear reactors, can be found in countries like Australia and Canada, which gave more security in supply. This was an attractive prospect at the time, given that most of the world's oil was coming from the Middle East, which had proven an unreliable source. Another factor at the time was that many experts were warning that hydrocarbons were fast running out. It also had the added benefit of not producing carbon dioxide emissions during generation, but most importantly, especially given the cost of oil at the time, it could provide cost-effective electricity. This also meant the country would have to spend much less on imported fuel, helping with the nation's poor balance of payment situation. The proposed reactor would provide roughly 650 megawatts of power. For reference, a coal plant would produce 1,190 tonnes of CO2 a year to generate this much electricity. At the time, this would amount to nearly 25% of Irish electricity production, with the remaining 75% coming from peat, coal, oil, and hydroelectric power. The proposed reactor was a pressurised water reactor, which was based off the designs of the nuclear facility in Stade, Germany. A nuclear reactor generates electricity through a controlled, self-sustaining nuclear reaction. A nuclear reaction involves the splitting of an atom usually uranium-235, by a neutron, which releases energy and two further neutrons, which induce more reactions. In a reactor, the uranium is in the form of solid tubes known as fuel rods. When it undergoes a reaction, it releases energy. This energy heats water in the primary loop, which draws heat away. Because the reactor becomes extremely hot during operation, the water in the primary loop 
would boil into a gas and not be an effective coolant. So to keep the water from boiling, it is kept under extreme pressure by a pressurizer. If the reactor gets too hot, control rods are inserted, which absorb neutrons, reducing reactivity. The heat from the primary loop heats up water in the secondary loop via a heat exchanger, turning it into steam, which powers a generator, producing power. The plant was to be based in the southeast of the country, in a place called Carnesore Point in County Wexford, where the local geology suited the big construction project. The site offered other advantages as well, such as being close to the main electricity transmission lines and having a low population density. These plans were met with serious opposition. The proposal came at the height of the Cold War, where there was a real risk of nuclear exchange hanging over people daily. Nuclear power suffered from a bad public image. Opponents of the plant believed having nuclear power in the country would lead to an increase in cancer rates, run the risk of a catastrophic disaster, and potentially involve Ireland in nuclear weapons development. Massive protests were held in Dublin and around the country, including in Cairnsor Point itself, where a festival protest was held, which saw 5,000 people gather one weekend, with protesters adopting the slogan, Get to the Point. The festival saw many of the country's top performers give live shows, and an atmosphere of peaceful rebellion swept the country. Irish politicians, realising the scale of the backlash, did not want to be associated with the project, and it was quietly abandoned. In its place, it was decided to build a coal-fired plant instead, as an alternative source of cheap electricity, which was much less controversial, and in 81, the plan was formally dropped. In 1987, a 900-megawatt coal plant was built at Money Point, which, to this day, remains by far the country's largest power station. The Nuclear Energy Board was also closed, with some members going on to form a pro-nuclear lobby group called Better Environment with Nuclear, which still exists today. Eventually, in 1999, a law was passed banning the generation of electricity in the Republic of Ireland by nuclear fission. To this day, there are no nuclear generators on the island of Ireland. However, because of interconnectors between Ireland, the UK and continental Europe, some electricity sold in the country does come from nuclear fission. Ireland currently gets its energy from a combination of sources, including natural gas, coal, wind, solar, hydro and oil, would peat soon to be phased out completely. While the country still burns a range of different fossil fuels, it is investing huge amounts in renewables and has set ambitious plans, along with the EU, to cut emissions by 2030, aiming to reduce 1990 level emissions by 40%. As was just mentioned, Ireland is hoping to drastically reduce its carbon emissions by 2030 by investing in a number of different technologies. Nuclear power could help in this fight. Do you think it's time Ireland reconsidered its long-standing opposition, or do you think the risks outweigh the benefits? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, be sure to give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.